Hello friends, it's Jessica. Welcome or welcome back to Jessie Kate Creates. We are jumping right into the tutorial today because this card has a lot of steps to it. I made this card over the course of three or four days, just kind of spending an hour here and an hour there when I had the time. So I am working on an 80 pound panel of four and a quarter by five and a half cardstock because I am making an A2 card today. And as you can see, I'm doing some ink blending because I've been obsessed with ink blending lately. Um, I will go ahead and link a video that kind of slows down and shows in detail how I like to do my ink blending. Um, but for this card, I wanted to use purples because I know I'm making a floral card. I went into this knowing there were going to be a lot of flowers on the card. I wanted my main flower to be yellow, so I picked purple since it's a complementary color and they would make each other really pop on the card. Once I have the ink blending how I like it, you can see it looks gorgeous. I wanted to add some more texture to this card, so I reached for an embossing folder. Embossing folders are some of my favorite tools in the craft room because they totally transform your projects. So this is the Spellbinders four petal floral embossing folder and it is a 3D folder. So I am going to spray the back of my cardstock panel with some clean water and this is going to help soften the fibers of the paper so that when I crank it through my cuddle bug, I'm not going to get cracking on my panel. So I'm just taking the time to line this up and get it exactly where I want it so that that square is in the center of my panel. And you'll see here, it's once it's done, it is beautiful. That completely transforms that panel. And now, I think this was the next day I decided I wanted to add some sparkles, so I used my DIY mica spray, which is just perfect pearls and water, but I forgot to record it. But here you can see what it looks like after I'd sprayed the panel and it had dried, and it just has the most gorgeous glitter and shimmer and sparkle to it. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the sentiment. I am using the Friendship Blooms stamp set by Hero Arts and Gina K. That is a stamp set that was gifted to me when I did a blog post for Hero Arts. And actually I'll have that video linked up here as well in case you want to see some of the cards I created with that stamp set. Unfortunately, I do believe it's retired now. But I wanted to use this stamp set for one of the sentiments in it that I think is absolutely gorgeous and it is the sentiment that inspired this card. It's what I'm stamping down onto my paper now because as you can see I am going to black heat emboss this sentiment. So I'm stamping it with my um, black VersaFine Onyx pigment ink. I'm going to stamp it two or three times and then I'm going to sprinkle on some black embossing powder. And you can see the sentiment reads, let us be grateful to the people who make us happy for they are the charming gardeners who make our souls blossom by Marcel Proust. I think that's a gorgeous sentiment and it was the inspiration for this card and it was why I wanted to create a floral themed card um, because I wanted to go along with that, you know, gardening and soul blossoming sentiment. So pro tip here, whenever you're using embossing powder, but especially black embossing powder, put it away as soon as you're done with it. Before you even break out that heat gun, put it away. Um, because I know from experience it is so easy to tap over the tray that you have your powder in or the bottle that it's in and it gets everywhere. It's a pain to clean up, especially the black embossing powder. It just likes to stick on to everything for some reason. So put the powder away before you melt everything. But once the sentiment is melted, you can see it's nice and black and glossy and it looks gorgeous on the card, just adding a little bit more interest. And you can see now too that my panel is pretty warped from all of the water that's gone onto it and all of the um, embossing I did to the panel. So to help keep it flat on the card, I'm using a combination of dry adhesive and wet adhesive. And you can see I used a lot. Did I go overboard? Maybe, probably, looking back at it now. But it's what I did, so I wanted to include it in the video. I'm sure we've all done that a time or two before. So once I had all my adhesive on this panel, I start adhering it to a white card base and I always start by lining things up at the bottom corner along the folded edge of the card so that if I have to trim anything off, um, I can do it along the open edge. So I just take my time adhering that down to the card and then I put a block over it and let it dry for a few minutes. And once that was done, I noticed I made my panel a little short so I needed to cut off some of the card base that was showing at the top. 
So once I have that cut and everything is neat and even, it's time to move on to adding the flowers to my card. Now I used three different die sets for all of these flowers and leaves. The first one is the Spellbinders Be Bold Blooms die set. This is like my go-to die set for flowers, um, and I knew I wanted to use that biggest flower in yellow so that it would pair nicely with the purple on my background. Now for the smaller flowers that are going to be like little accessories, I decided to use a soft kind of like aqua light minty color because I knew it would work well with the yellow and the purple. Now I also brought in another die set. This is the Spellbinders Mini Blooms and Sprigs so I could get a couple more tiny flowers on the card. And you might notice for all the flowers I'm cutting multiple layers. I am going to layer these flowers up so they're nice and dimensional. And then lastly, I brought in the Concord and Ninth Fresh Cut Florals Edition 1 die set. This is a retired die set, but I wanted a really big leaf, and when I looked through my stash, this set had it. I have made another card with that set before, so I'll go ahead and link it if it's something you want to see. So once everything was cut, I did all the cutting one night, so I didn't record any of it, so I was like watching TV while I did it. Um, but once I had everything cut, the next day I came in and I decided I wanted to add a little bit more interest to the main flower on this card. So I am just taking an orange ink and just putting it right along the tips of all of the petals, just like you see there. And that's just going to really add dimension. If you wanted to do that to the smaller flowers, you could, but this card was already very detailed and intricate and I'd already spent like three days on it at this point. So... I decided not to add any ink blending to the other elements and I think they look just fine. But if that is something you enjoy doing, totally go for it, but it wasn't in the in the cards for me. <laughs> okay, so I forgot I needed to cut the centers to my flowers, so I just cut those out of some black cardstock. Does anybody else do that? Please let me know in the comments if you do. I always forget to cut the centers of my flowers. Okay, so now the last step for the flowers before I start adhering things is to curl the petals on each of the flowers. Now I tend to wear my nails a little long and I often use them as tools when I'm crafting. I know not everyone likes to do that or maybe you keep your nails really short. Um, so to curl your petals, you can use uh, a pen as you saw me doing there. You could use the back of a paintbrush. Anything small and rounded you can use to add a little bit of curl to those pebble petals. But I just kept using my fingernails because that's what works for me. So I did that to all of the flowers, the big ones and the small ones. And once that was done, it was time to start putting everything together. So for this, I'm just using uh, my wet glue and putting it in the center of each of the bigger layers of the flowers. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but for the biggest flower, it doesn't have multiple layers. So I just cut out the same one twice and I just rotate it so it looks like it's meant to be layered, even though it's not. And that's a really good way to stretch your supplies. Um, now, if you're watching me make this card and you're thinking like, oh my gosh, I really like this, but that's too intricate or that's too detailed or I don't like doing that, then don't, um, you know, modify this however you need for it to make sense for you and for it to fit with how you like to make your cards. Maybe you don't want to do that much die cutting. So um, instead of cutting multiple layers, maybe you just cut one layer um, or maybe you really love to stamp. So instead of using dies for your shapes, you use stamps and with coordinating dies or you fussy cut them out. Um, you know, whatever it is that works for you, or maybe you don't like ink blending and you're not going to do all that for your background. That's fine. Grab a piece of pattern paper you really like and use that for a background instead. The beautiful thing about crafting is there are no right or wrong answers. There's just what you like and what works for you. So I hope you keep that in mind whenever you're watching um, people create, um, that you can always modify something to work with your creative process because we all like to craft differently and that's perfectly fine. So once all of my flowers are put together, it's time to add them to the card. And here you see I'm just like I, I'm taking the time to figure out where I want everything to go and kind of how I want it laid out before I start adhering things down. And once I have a general idea of what I want, then I'm going to start gluing it down. For flower arrangements, generally I like to have one flower in the middle and then some greenery coming off of either side and maybe a couple just like um, 
smaller flowers grouped around the bigger flower, which is exactly what I did for this layout. Um, and I don't know if some of you guys might be like me where when it comes to adding the embellishments to the card, you take way too long stressing out over exactly where everything should go. Um, if you do that, please let me know in the comments. So something I have to constantly remind myself is when I give this card to someone or I sell it at a craft fair, the recipient isn't going to be thinking mm, that flower should be down and over to the left or that leaf should be turned a little or, oh, I don't like how she placed this flower. They are not thinking that at all. They are thinking, what a gorgeous card. I'm so happy someone took the time to, you know, write a message in this and send it to me, right? So hopefully that takes some of the stress off when you're creating um, your cards that we obsess over the placement of things more than our recipients um, ever do, and they usually don't notice those things. Okay, so like I said, I am really bad at cutting out the centers of my flowers. So for the smaller ones, I'm just using some gems from my stash. I will have these linked in the description below. I think I got them on Amazon. But I know one thing us crafters have in common. We have a hoard of gems and sequins and sparkles. So please use what you have in your stash already before running out to buy this um, on Amazon. Um, but you can see once this is done, there is so much texture and dimension and interest on the front of this card. I am in love with how this turned out. You see that? I especially love that like it looks like there's a ton of dimension on this card, but there's no foam tape because I love using foam, but this didn't need it between the 3D embossed background and the kind of lifted up petals. It's already super dimensional, which also means this will be really easy to mail since there's no foam tape. Now for the inside of the card, I made my own sentiment. Um, I came up with a sentiment that I thought fit well with the front of the card. I laser printed it out and used my mink machine to foil that. At some point, I'll do a tutorial on how I do that whole process. Um, but I went with the sentiment, thank you for always tending to my garden. Happy Mother's Day, because I needed a Mother's Day card for this. But you can change that inside sentiment up any way you want to make this a birthday card. Thank you. Thinking of you. Anniversary. You know, sky's the limit. Do whatever you want. Now for the envelope. I'm using one of my favorite ways to decorate an envelope. I just try to find a stamp that matches the feel or the vibe of the card, and I stamp that on the bottom corner of my envelope. So I looked through my stash until I found a stamp set with some big flowers in it. I think this one is from Michaels, but it's really old. It's been in my stash for a while now. And I just used one of the inks that I used on the front of the card to stamp that down onto a purple envelope, and boom, now we have a coordinating envelope for our card. I'm in love with how this card turned out. It's probably one of my favorite cards that I've made this year. It was very detailed, but I'm really proud of it. And um, by the way, my mom loved this card when she got it for Mo uh, Mother's Day a few weeks ago. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. I hope there's some sort of inspiration or tip that you were able to take away from the video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps YouTube know you like my channel and it helps other people find me. And then you can always hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.